Hello America, this is Call of Duty Goddess. Today is August the 18th, 2016. I'm at Breitbart here at an article titled, Refugee Resettlement Industries Propaganda Campaign Accelerates with DC Rally. This is brought to you by Emmy, the force to be reckoned with. The politically powerful refugee resettlement industry is accelerating its propaganda campaign to significantly increased the number of Muslim refugees allowed into the United States with a rally in Washington, D.C. on August the 28th. You've got to hand it to George Soros and big progressive funders like the Tides Foundation. They know how to promote a propaganda campaign, Ann Corcoran of Refugee Resettlement Watch says of the August 28th event. The financial backers of the rally include most of the big political players in the lucrative refugee resettlement industry where government-funded voluntary agency, or VOLAGs, receive more than $1 billion from taxpayers annually. That's billion with a B, folks, to resettle an average of 70,000 refugees each year in the United States. Among these rally sponsors on the VOLAG Federal Gravy Train are the U.S. Committee for Refugees and Immigrants, whose local affiliate is currently embroiled in the Twin Falls, Idaho refugee rape controversy, Church World Service, the International Rescue Committee, World Relief, HIAS, formerly known as the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society, the Episcopal Church, and the Ethiopian Community Development Council, Inc. Other well-known far-left groups sponsoring the event include the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee, the George Soros-funded National Immigration Forum, Sojourners, and, of course, we can't leave out the Southern Poverty Law Center, According to its website, in the midst of the greatest refugee crisis since World War II, advocates from across the country will gather at D.C. Rally for Refugees August 28, 2016 at the Outdoor Sylvan Theater at the Washington Monument on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. Rain or shine. The organizers claim that D.C. Rally for Refugees was inspired by Americans who traveled to Greece and volunteered directly with refugees fleeing war and violence in Syria and other countries. As Refugee Resettlement Watch's Corcoran notes, they are promoting the rally as a collective voice against intolerance. But the rally is really intended to influence Congress to increase the number of refugees resettled in the United States from the 70,000 that arrived in fiscal year 2015 to more than 200,000 in fiscal year 2017. In September, Barack Hussein Obama will be leading a major effort in the United Nations to open our gates even wider for hundreds of thousands of third world immigrants to be placed in your towns, Corcoran points out. Robert Carey, director of the Office of Refugee Resettlement, and until recently an executive with one of the largest VOLAGs, the International Rescue Committee, said on an August 9 press call the Obama administration wants to double the refugee resettlement budget for fiscal year 2017 and resettle more than 200,000 humanitarian arrivals in the United States in the fiscal year that begins on October the 1st. The President's fiscal year 2017 budget requests include 2.2 billion with a B for ORR programs and that represents the cost of maintaining services for additional refugees and other entrants and unaccompanied children primarily from Central America. The President's budget request would, would support a total of 213,000 humanitarian arrivals including 100,000 refugees in 2017. Once a refugee arrives in the U.S. they are eligible to act access the same benefits as American citizens who are here legally, including temporary aid to new families, Medicaid, SSI, and SNAP. 
They can also join the military from day one. As Breitbart News reported, Kerry is only the most recent director of the Office of Refugee Resettlement to participate in the revolving door between the federal funder of the VOLAGs who resettle refugees and the VOLAGs who benefit from the taxpayers. As a recent poll found, most Americans oppose increasing the number of Syrian refugees resettled in the United States. Historically, as Gallup reports, Americans have a general reluctance to accept refugees in the United States, even in response to situations that are clearly oppressive. In the light of the recent increase in Islamist terrorist attacks in the United States and around the world, that reluctance among most Americans has now developed into an attitude of outright resistance. Despite that widespread opposition to refugee resettlement, the Volags are seeking to keep the federal refugee resettlement gravy train rolling in their direction. At an even greater level, through the use of propaganda and community organizing events, as Ann Corcoran points out, September is also the month when the administration will make their final determination for the U.S. Refugee Admissions Program to submit their plan for fiscal year 2017. They said last year they were shooting for 100,000 refugees for fiscal year 2017, but we expect the number to be much higher. The buck stops with Speaker Ryan. And frankly, there is only one person who is now in the catbird seat to stop them this fall, and that is Speaker Ryan. That's not a good thing, folks. Only Congress can stop them by not granting the money needed to place hundreds of thousands of needy people, some from countries that hate us, in over 350 American towns. Now, here they go attempting to soften up Congress by rallying in Washington for refugees on August the 28th. George Soros has his fingerprints all over these efforts to promote refugee resettlement through a number of organizations he funds. George Soros's Open Society Foundation spends millions promoting Somalian migrants. Documents show that George Soros's Open Society Foundation has spent $1.8 million to improve the image of Somalians in Europe and to combat Islamophobia. Newly leaked documents from the Open Society Foundation by site DC Leak show the organized web of funding that George Soros and Open Society have become infamous for. One particular report shows funding for an initiative to promote the image of Somalians in Europe who, according to the report, are in the top 10 most discriminated people on the continent. According to the foundations, the real problem is the image of Somalians in the media and not the problems that have led to the creation of that image. Political and media coverage of Somalis was largely negative, focusing on piracy, terrorism, female genital mutilation, and abuse of the welfare system, the report states. Somali men have garnered this image due to discrimination, according to the report. While piracy along the Horn of Africa is well known, there have been many cases of Somalians being involved in sexual assaults on minors and people trafficking. Those leaked documents also reveal a number of startling revelations about the work of the NGO when it comes to combating what they refer to as xenophobic parties in countries around Europe. According to at least one document, the Foundation has been calling for the censorship of language in the European Parliament they term as hateful and have been actively working with various socialist members of European Parliament to train them on how to combat xenophobic language. The same strategy now appears to be deployed in the United States where it will be on full display in the August 28th DC rally for refugees. Welcome to the Sharia compliant land of America. I'm going to check out my schedule and see if I can get out there. Having said this, there is a genocide in the Middle East going on, and it is in part due to George Soros, the oligarchs, and NATO. America, through NATO, and a few other Gulf nations and Western nations are funding ISIS, 
are fueling the genocide that is happening in the Middle East. Because if these oligarchs really wanted to do something about ISIS, they wouldn't have started ISIS to begin with, because they are the ones that start and control ISIS. Now they've created this problem and they have to do something about it. So what are they doing? They're bringing jihadis into the Western world to in fact change the Western world to make them Sharia compliant nations. And they are not bringing in the Yazidis and the Kurds who will not basically cause these type of problems in the Western world. So it's all about control. This is Call of Duty Goddess signing off, and as always, I've got your six.